So welcome everyone to the second part of our season two of workshops on XYZ. This evening we have Joseph Segura. I probably said that wrong, um, but he is an environment artist based in Peru. And the focus for the workshop this evening is going to be an exploration of foliage creation for games. So Joseph, whenever you're ready, take it away. Yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be to be here really. So I'm going to talk to you about the creation process of foliage for games, mostly focused this time in small ground foliage. So for this, I prefer something special to talk about. So since I'm a huge fan of environment art in, in Souls game, and I also noticed that not you really play the game. Of course, I, I don't because uh, I'm really bad at it. Uh, I don't play that often. So I decided to create a little diorama, uh, let's call it uh, like that, inspired by alien ring, and mood and colors. So I will talk about how I end up with this and some tips in the process. So this is this was made especially for this workshop. So I haven't posted anything yet about it. So it's recently recent art. So let's start with this. I'm also including this human mesh just for you to to get a sense of scale in game. I also have uh, have to thank a friend of mine, Adam Denker, to show me like the how to do it in Twitter. Like it's it's basically place your human mesh and well in this case I just activate uh, cast shadows so it doesn't affect my ferns and I also made the material and lead. And so that really really looks really cool when you want to show a, a material something like that and I thought it would be cool to show it here with a bit of foliage. So here is the wireframe for this. As you can see, some of the meshes are already triangulated by me. Um, you can see in some cases, there are like too much geo, but uh, as I said, it was mostly for this workshop. And I want some kind of like resolution here and not look too janky. To, uh, so for the ferns, I think I use a bit more than enough. But again, this was for quality. I didn't want to use too much. So, but mm, yeah, it was it was good for me. So I did it like that. I also use like uh, I was playing a bit of the game. Mm, and I saw in the flowers for the stock. Let me show you this this part here. I used that like something like the same like in the game because you can play a little and explore the ground foliage. You see that the flowers have like just a plane. This is just a plane. It looks like two planes cross, but you can see here it's just a plane with a cut in the middle. That is basically like two planes without without any loop. Good. But yeah, I I prefer to do to do this. So now cuts in the middle, just really low poly for this. Signs that look. Let me show you again. Was something like that. You see, it's just like a like a flat plane there. So yeah, no need to put cuts in there. Uh, for this part, uh, I made a petals, as you can see in the outside, but the center was a little a little dark point, so I didn't like it. Although my school was looking good to me, so I had some planes uh, around it to give that sort of 3D. You can see it here. I don't know if you see a little plane here, like in other direction. They're just like the center of the flower facing to the sides, so it gives you some 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 sort of perspective. Uh, this, this is the grass. I didn't want to add too much resolution to my grass because. Again, I, I was not focusing on the grass here. I, I was mostly interested in the flowers, the yellow flowers and the uh, ferns, and to get that kind of color, that kind of yellowish, uh, desaturated mood that has some of the foliage, mostly due to lighting. But I want to achieve that effect with just neutral lighting and mostly regarding 
in the textures. Uh, it, that is also important when you create foliage because first it's going to be changed uh, through lighting in the engine. So you you have to, to consider that. And also that the darker your texture, the darker your lighting bounces are. So also to consider. Just try not to go too dark. But yeah. So I'm going to show you my schools. This was my school. I mostly use uh, the move tools to give the, the kind of uh, distortion in the corners and like that. I the, the, that can sound uh, red, but I use the clay tubes for this because uh, this this polish I just saw in the game were like really pushing some parts of the flower, like like crumbled parts, something like that. So I want to emphasize that. And I usually use clay. That's why I include it. I usually use clay. It's smoother. Uh, in most of my assets, I really use clay, only clay and sometimes uh, smooth, of course. But yeah, this time I decided to use clay tubes. I didn't even touch clay, if I remember. So everything was made with clay tubes, some, some smooth here and there, and then again, clay tubes. That is also applied to these little lines in the petals. So. For this, I also like to use pinch. I have in this pinch here, except for the leaves that I end up not using. This was something like uh, how I did the leaves was uh, I just take a petal, just stretch it, and just apply soap and sir, working on it. Uh, just like like when you grab a, a sphere from ZBrush and just tweak it as much as possible or so something like that. It's nice. At the end of, of the day, it's just a sculpt and it's going to be baked into texture, so no worries about it. So for, well, you can see here the, petal, the petals. I'm going to show you after that the, my low poly, how my low poly, my base mesh look like, so no worries about that. Mm, for this, for the, for the stock, I didn't want to add too much detail on it because as I saw, it was only a flat plane, not much resolution here. So I just uh, used a crumble brush in that one that has like little uh, strips and like that you can see here. So really not, not much, only this I, I duplicated and used my move tool to just add some variations to that. Yeah, you you won't you won't see it, but yeah. So this is the thing I was I was mentioning about the center. So you can see here it's a little small because I thought at first that I was gonna use only one layer, but I end up using a lot of layers and also these uh, single petals here for like the bottom. I don't know if I can show you here. Uh, okay, this this one. These ones, there are small petals like pointing down uh, in the lowest layer. It's not that visible from that perspective, but something like that, you see? Not adding too much to the foreground, but making it more like an oval, something like that. So I ended up using for that. And I just merged some of them, like two or three, not not more than two, because it was already a lot of petals here, you can see, on the flowers. I, I didn't want my flower to look more like this. But this, this was like the, the maximum of petals I wanted. So this was the first one, the second one. And this is kind of a merge between these two. So yeah, for instance, I will not merge this one and another of these ones on top as a layer because they were, it's, it's gonna look like really like too big and too many petals for me. So yeah, I usually merge these two or these two or these two and some single petals around it just to give it some sort of 3D aspect uh, looking. So for this center, I also use, I use is this, I duplicate this, I mask out my the center and I use 
separated that technique where you like uh, auto group it with polygroups and then mask it with control shift and then you just click in delete hidden that i think is in the 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 your right panel let me open zebras and and show you a sec. yeah that would be good just to see some of your actual your actual sculpts in zebrush if possible yep yep since i'm talking about the 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 petals this is my sculpt so uh as you can see how i did the center was like, oops was like i create first uh low poly that is this part here the center that inner circle in blender i use blender um and export it and then uh, start with a cylinder here you can just click in append and cylinder and yes start from from there and create this kind of things that give gave it that shape and then scatter it around this circle just works for me like a background because without it it would look like let me see if i can if i can mask it so this is the kind of thing I do for masking auto groups. Since I haven't done Dynamesh, you can see it works. When you do Dynamesh, uh, it's that close. All this is going to become a single mesh. So when you hit auto groups, it's going to be something like that instead of this. So make sure just to not apply Dynamesh. In this case, you have the option to use Dynamesh just for your single like for instance a single petal you're working on it you use dynamesh to kind of retopology it and add details but once you're finished sculpting and just want to scatter around as i said i didn't sculpt a flower i did I sculpt like single petals and then scattered around like an array so i didn't use uh, dynamesh for that Is if that i want to Sorry, Joseph, is yeah. that something you do in ZBrush, the, the scatter and distribution? Yeah, yeah, I usually do it in external software, but if you, for instance, if you do this in Blender, you have a low poly for the petal, you will export, uh, let's see, let's say five petals uh, making a flower. So you have to open ZBrush and sculpt five petals. But if you, you export from Blender, three single petals, you're going to sculpt three single petals in ZBrush and then just move it from, from that. And if I want to add some variation for any petal, I just go here, click the, the move and just move it away. And, and that's it. It's different from the rest. So you work less, but work smart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you just move it from here and it's easier, right? Because you have like your three instances there. You can just move it if you need. Most of the time it works without that, but I I, I usually or rotate it so it variations in the height map mm -hmm. or use this brush or something use minor changes, you know. Yep. But yeah, it's more effective that way. So for this one, I I was gonna show you this. Oh, okay. So yeah, As you can see it's it's just like a. It was like actually a cube. I just extrude and I, I smooth it here. Uh, so like my play tube, as I said, just did something like that because it, it isn't even gonna be like visible. Without this, it would look something like that. I didn't want it because if I if I would make it bigger. For instance. Uh, I was I was gonna see some of part of the petal, and I just wanted to add like a ground to texture. You can also do that. Uh, there's no no issue. Just I didn't want this for for my for my flower, and it it didn't add too much to it, but but worked also like a shadow caster. I could just mask it out. So things like that. This is my first, let me see, this is my first flower. Using the same petals, 
just move it. I, I in fact I just duplicate it and just select uh, as I did for this, clicking auto groups. Let me show you again. And works as expected again because I haven't done Dynamesh. If I click on the Dynamesh, first it will crash right now because I'm recording. And secondly, it will just generate auto mesh here. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, something like that will happen. Uh, so that's why I don't use Dynamesh when I'm just ready to just play around because you, you have to think like this. You you create your block mesh, your base mesh, you sculpt it. Uh, you mostly want to work modular as you work for architecture. So you work your your petals and then just cut around. Then when you're ready, just export this. This is also a workflow I I'm just I started using recently. So as you can see, I have only a flower here. And then here and a fur, for instance, right? And here another flower, I think. Yeah, so think like that because it's more organized. You just uh, finish the sculpting and then click in save tool. Once you save your tool, you're gonna store it in your in your folders. And you just create another project and start, you know, start like placing it like an atlas, something like that. You can see here in my atlas, ploy, uh, atlas project, here you have the golden flower leaf, the fern, the the other fern. Well, it was it was it was separated because it was actually duplicated. So the fern O uh, five is this one in the middle, and O uh, four is just the duplicate version, and I just mask out the stalk. And the lay hidden that is, let me open ZBrush again. That is here. I will have it here, but I think you can find it in modify topology, I guess. Uh, yes, yes, modify topology. So yeah, that's how that's how I work here. I just work separately, so more organized, as you can see here. Let me show you. Oh, don't forget. Sorry, sorry. Don't forget to use back facing mask, mask that is found in brush. If your low poly is thin, for instance, here, if I add a lot of details, like really, and then I am using Dynamesh because I am in the school process, it will make a lot of holes. So it will look really bad. So if so, only if your mesh is really thin or you are adding like too many layers, like for instance, here. If I wanted to add more like a dumb standard, things like this. Uh, and then I'm using Dynamesh only for Dynamesh because you have to regenerate your mesh. Uh, yeah, it will look bad and it will destroy your work. If you do so and you have Dynamesh on and you know that it will look bad and don't want to redo it, what you can do is just because sometimes you and your, your bug mesh looking like that, really, really inflating this floor. So how to fix it is just go to your back, enable the back face mask, and with any with any brush with this enabled, just start sculpting here. Like you're adding more volume to your backside. And then just when you click in Dynamesh, it will work fine. So this is this should be enabled at in the beginning. Just to avoid this, but you can also fix it later. So just make it sure, just not redo it. Just Use it and just pull it in the back and then use shift, smooth it, and yeah, it, it will work fine. I happened to me doing this because I, it wasn't too thin. I didn't enable it. So yeah, I just fix it like that and then disable it. That, that's all I had to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so yeah, for just the, the, the flower one, I just show you. This is like my folder. This is how my folder looks like. I have a sub tool included only the, the mesh I want. Like I don't have a project where I have like a golden flower here, a petal here, and a cube here. I, I don't like it. I used to work like that before, but yeah, it's more effective this way. So I have a folder with a fern subtool, the fern two, etc. And I can just open ZBrush, create another project, and just and just open subtools, and yeah, I can just scatter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more organized. Mm -hmm. So this this is how my low poly mesh look like this is what i created in, in blender i just call this and i end up with this you can even only create one petal 
and duplicate it in Cedarbrush. There is no issue just to avoid creating here or dating in Blender. Like there is no reason because at the end you're gonna be doing the same in Cedarbrush. So why not create only one and duplicate it like like subtools in 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 Cedarbrush. This is how my my for look like in Blender. Uh, this it is like made in Blender, so it took me some time because I only create one and duplicate it along the stock. Uh, and also make them like a uh, exact copy. There, there is an option in 3D package when you just duplicate a, a 3D object and make it an instance. So if you uh, select any of the of these copies or even the original one and just or oh, and just go to edit mode. Well, in, in Blender is edit mode. In Maya is like just select your your mode, your vertex or, or face. You do it and edit, so you also edit all the rest of the copies. And why I did that and not work with the petal? Because you you know, like for the ferns, there is a main stalk here, the bigger one, and then like the little branches. I I rem I forgot the the name of it. Have also the same shape, like little stalks and little leaves here. So that's why I create this one for Blender. And then I, I was going, I just started to scatter this around the stock in ZBrush. So I did this in Blender and I did this in ZBrush. So I can just move or rotate it if I want. Because most of the time you create this in ZBrush and it's really annoying uh, because you have a school uh, one or a school everyone or just one of them and then copy some others or just scroll one and just. Uh, duplicate it. That is kind of the same that I did in Blender. Just I could load more things because since it's a three package, it's, I am more used to it. It's more comfortable to me to move from 3D here. So yeah, for this one, I just add some. Once you have this mesh, you can just use your you. Let me open super second. You can use your your move tool or any other brush, and let me. And just something like that, you have to, you want to add variation, something like that, right? Uh, sometimes even you will use your. Well, I don't have my my tablet right now, so yeah, it's, it's hard to get the <laughs> sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, something like that is it, needed, for instance, in this project I'm showing because uh, for that kind of assets in Souls game looks like we are really bumping things up and down. So that's something I did for my petals. You can see that that's the reason why mostly and mostly rely on the AO map to, to make it look like a really dirty and like that kind of dark spots. Yeah. You know, some that kind of dark, darker areas where you, sh you usually don't use in the flowers, you're going to create a a white flower you don't usually go to black or darker tones just rely on the on the shadows but for this pro for this project i just wanted to add this because i wanted like a really dirty look right mm -hmm. so it was intentionally but it's not common it's not common to do that in the albedo so going back to this this is how uh, i turn out the, the low poly to the high poly you can see here here just duplicate versions for the first use one because it was needed only one. So for the material, so in this case, <laughs> you can see the the albedo and let's pretend that the albedo just looked like that because it in fact is like a whole graph full of really random things attached to it. I don't want to go too deep into that because it is mostly just using your gradient for your hay map, your AO or your curve, really anything you can think of, you can use it as a base for this gradient and just mask things out, uh, just masking the, the curvature and it was really a mess. So let's suppose the albedo is just created like this, just grab. Uh, ignore this part because since I had my finished albedo with alpha, with opacity in the alpha channel, I just remove the alpha channel to show it again. <laughs> so I remove it to add it again, just to show you how to add it. So yeah, ignore this part. Let's suppose this is this without, without any alpha information. So how I make the albedo is after you finish texturing, you finish 
mas masking out mas masking things out like the flowers, ferns, and grass. You just uh, something I used before. There was a note called like uh, dilation, dilatation. I don't remember the name of the note for uh, for designer, but it was external one. Sp Painter has this filter, but doesn't work for foliage. So if you you can also do it, but if you want to create, you want to paint your your foliage in Substance Painter, as I did, for instance, in my project of the ferns, I did it, uh, my latest project for foliage. Uh, but when you generate a texture and you export it, you can see that even if you activate or enable the option for the for the deletion, infinite or whatever your settings is. It won't work because your opacity is like a custom one. You're importing it. I don't really know if there is an option. I I tried to Google it, but didn't find any solution. So what I did is after I export from Substance Painter, just end up with this thing, something like this. I, even without this, only something like this. Okay, you can see. Let's let's pretend this is my export from 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 Substance Painter. No deletion. Okay. What I did in the past was taking this with no delay, the no this kind of thing, and just take the the texture and apply the node, the custom node that extend the, the border of the pixels. So that was I I used to do, but I found a node inside Substance Designer that I'm pretty sure it was it was there for a long time. It's not a new thing. Call uh, I can even. It's the game. The, no, uh, diffusion, diffusion color. Okay, this is called diffusion color, and there is also a, a grayscale version called diffusion grayscale. So if you take your sport, let's let's see this one, or use your substance painter one that ha hasn't have it. So take it, apply the diffusion. Uh, it takes three parameters: is your texture, is it your mask. That is that is gonna be your opacity mask and the intensity. I don't use it. I use the base settings, by the way. So that's why I didn't show you that. Like the settings, I use add the node and that's it. So I use my texture, my opacity mask, and it gives me this kind of of blurry background. Okay. So I use it for every map because I'm it's a foolish. The same for every map. You can see. Even with with normal, I used to then I used to well add this intensity note because sometimes the normals are like really messed up because they're treating like a color texture instead of a normal. So yeah, just to fix it, intensity map. Okay, so you can see for the for the roughness, since it was like I I did this really quick because I was really busy. So I did this quick project. I didn't want to to spend a lot of time, especially texturing, just to add dark, darker parts and like that. And that's why my roughness looked really simple. This is all my roughness. This is I only imported my finished texture for the video, so the rest is just like the ones I I use. And my AO also. And here in the in the right are two maps, like the R ARR. The, that are mostly used the ambient occlusion, roughness, and mask is not for metallic, it's mask. And my opacity, why? Because I don't export it. And the roughness and mask and AO, that is, I'm using this kind of for flow at the moment. So I'm going to show you how my bed looks like. Uh, this is like a flower. You can see it looks like really dirty and, and dark spots, on this, something like that. that. That's all I really. Just did this, this thing, just uh, at clusters, as you can see the flower, check for the for the ferns and for the grass, it it didn't take me too, too much. It's like the common workflow uh, using for texturing and creating your high poly for foliage. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's all. That's that was, all. That was really cool, Joseph. Uh, we've got a couple of questions, if that's okay, to go through those with you. And if anybody else has any questions, please feel free to ask in the, the workshop chat channel. Um, so the first one is, uh, obviously, like you've explored the process of creating foliage and you're, you know, you've gone through sculpting and so on and so forth. Do you have any resources that you think might be useful for someone that's starting 
to explore that for the first time? Like, where where did you begin? Like, where did you? Were there any resources or online content that you found useful in sort of teaching you a little bit more about foliage and how foliage works? Um, yes, I, I have I have some resources in our station. I think I I I save my links. I can just attach them later. Yeah. After the that, yeah. that yes. would be really good. Yeah, if you put them into the presentation, yes. that would be awesome. Also, mm -hmm. also so something I did in the beginning. Do you remember? I I started posting like foliage some couple months ago. Mm -hmm. That was when I started. That thing I I also remember saying in the in the community and also on Twitter is like spending a lot of time doing a video. Do you remember it? Yeah, like yeah. I spent I spent like a week just to show the base color for my for belief. So it sounds crazy. Yeah, but yeah. as a beginner I, but yeah. as a beginner, the first time I did foliage it looks like stylized and it was I was realistic because yeah. I couldn't even find the right color for it. Yeah. So I decided okay I don't care. I would. I will spend a week searching for a right albedo, and after a lot of exploring, I even take some mega scans or like color picking, and then see. Okay, but this is too bright, etc. So right now, I'm just working for this project. For instance, I just open the, I just open designer. I just pick a random color, and it was okay in the range. I just render it, and it looks like, like I wanted. Yeah. So after just spend the time. May sound crazy, but you will understand, and you will have like a, some sort of visual memory. Or okay, I, I have to go between that that range. Mm -hmm. That is also between the range for the albedo and non metals. There is a PBR settings, and I'm gonna show you this too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for that one, so it's mostly around gray stones, something like that. You have, you may think the your base color is darker. Uh, and that is because you also have to add the translucency. So don't worry and just try it in engine because you may want your foliage to look like really green yeah. and really light because the foliage is, is like light, light texture. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're not considered that you're also going to use your translucency map. So this is going to do that thing, you know? Yeah. So it, you you might see the the text the base color like a darker beetle, but then in engine like a emissive map because of the because of your lighting and because of the translucency. Yeah, it works out differently. Yeah, did did you do any subsurface scattering with your foliage? Did you explore that at all? The in in this project I didn't mm -hmm. because the the render was made in Marmoset. Yeah. Although, but uh, let me go back to this text to this no you can see my oh i forgot to do this by the way for the translucency map i mentioned that in these two workflows the arm or the rma mm -hmm. <laughs> that is used you, you you're gonna think that i just flip the channels and talk about it it's really use i use <laughs> i use this one and i'm pretty sure this is the most common for you when you create mm -hmm. your props etc yeah. but this is also used and M is mostly for metals, but, but in foliage is replaced by mask. Mm -hmm. And the mask is not your opacity. The mask is for your subsurface. Because right. the, 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 there's two ways to approach to uh, for approaching a subsurface scattering. One, you either create your translucency map, where you actually control like the color you want and for each one. And just you, you just need a texture, okay? Because for do, doing that in the shader, you have to mask a lot of things. It's more customizable, but you know, so yeah. it depends on you. Or two, you just create a mask for your, for your, like the thick, thickness of it. Okay, I want only subsurface in my plants and the stack is gonna be dark. I use mask it and don't spark my translucency, only spark this mask yeah. here. As you can see, it, it have a, it, this is my opacity and I just remove the stack. Right. This is my mask, same for this. Only change the, the position. So okay. yeah. this in 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 Unreal Engine, for instance, in the shader, I just use this. That is the uh, the blue channel, and I just mask. I just multiply it for to my color, and then multiply it for my albedo, mm -hmm. just to give that that kind of similar color. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. And yeah, and it's it's in subsurface. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is uh, just again from me. It's about how do you so placing your foliage. So I guess it's one side of things to create the foliage, and you know that's obviously a process in itself. But then 
once you have it, like, can you talk a little bit about how you distribute your foliage? Like, how do you actually put your foliage where you want it in engine, if that makes sense? Yeah, you mean like the implementation, import settings, yeah. things like that, or or you mean uh, just more, the, the more distribution? Just distribution, more about where oh, actually okay. like do do you just like um do you just use the foliage tool and just scatter it, or do you do you do like a more handcrafted approach, or like how do you go about placing foliage? There are really nice tools in Unreal Engine, for instance. This is the the engine I use mm -hmm. that has well, I just discovered just a month ago. A bit more than that. Mm -hmm. This has a, a tool called procedural foliage. That is not that foliage, the foliage painter. Okay. So you have your your panel like landscape and your foliage. Okay, to paint foliage like a brush. But you also have another tool called procedural foliage. That when you go create like for take for instance uh three meters by three meters mm -hmm. prefab something like that prefab something like that and you just place like in a setting, the foliage you want to use for this square, and then just cut it around like a random parameter, something something like that, like like creating the rain in the, the rain software. Mm -hmm. I haven't explored much about it, so I don't I don't have too much information, but I saw it and it was just, I'm gonna include a video because I remember watching it in YouTube. So I'm really looking forward to use it, but I'm mostly hand placing my foliage. Okay. One, because I want that kind of uh, big, medium, and small. Yeah. like a slope so yeah. and for this one i also play hand place it because one i use marmoset and two because uh since i have some picture for from elden ring yeah you know i just yeah yeah picture of the first level because i didn't pass it yeah <laughs> but you can see this 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 golden this golden Golden flowers with ferns is for, just from the first scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I can relate. Yeah, to that. The... yeah, yeah. Um, it's a really yeah, so... difficult game. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, one final yeah. question is uh, again for me. It's just about your graph. Um, obviously, like you've shown your process there. It's a little hard to see. It's probably more the the video. Um, but if possible, yeah. if we could have like a slightly higher res version of that, just so people can particularly for people who maybe are beginning or trying to figure out like how to implement foliage uh, in designer, if you could just make the nodes a little bit bigger, maybe even if it was split over like two, two pictures, I know you're trying to show everything here and I totally appreciate that. But if it, if it wasn't too much trouble, if you could possibly provide us with a slightly bigger graph that the nodes were a bit more readable, that would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. I can, I can also show you the real uh, graph. <laughs> so, Taking mm -hmm. this idealization of Albedo because it's not like that. It's just a crazy thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I think you, you get the message across with this, but just if the nodes are a little bit clearer. So I think if you just scale them up slightly, like the ones on the right, we can kind of see. But yeah, yeah, these graphs tend to get a bit uh, spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> spaghetti so this is my... Uh, yeah, that's because I, I wasn't sure about the color you, you see here. Like the yellow was really right and yeah so and instead of removing them i just added on top because i wanted like a backup you mm -hmm. know a backup yeah, yeah. so this was this was something i did really quick i mean that the breaking fact because i have like i don't know one day yeah. one day so i have a record i have a yeah something like that so i have i have also recorded all my process look some few hours so yeah enjoy it so I will probably edit it and, and upload a video time later. So oh, that would be amazing. Time. That would be really, really good. Uh... But yeah, so here is, for instance, as I said, the roughness is really simple. You usually spend more time with it because here is where your details go. Yeah. Okay, let's keep it like that. This is something like... You can see some duplicated things because how I usually work recently in designer okay this worked better it's just like duplicating my notes like this you see in my resource i have only my my ed color from city brush that is just the spot the opacity mask yep. like converted into colors and the c brush shade so what i do is do this you know that this is gonna work for your mask for your normal ao and also for your opacity so you can do this and have a lot of things like that across your graph. 
that I don't like it when I use this external bitmap. So what I do is just put it here and put it here, you know? Yeah. Th things like that. Then I, I want the mask here. So this is the same mask, you know? Totally that. Because yeah, I use separate to... things. Yeah. Yeah. Th this went crazy. <laughs> Yeah. This went crazy. Just just because of the flower and since I didn't want to add too much detail to the video, I just ended up grabbing a lot of, of grayscale from here. You can also grab grayscale from from your normal normal map that is also common in R R G R G B A split. So you usually click on the blue channel. Right. Yes. Yeah, or you you, you can do either this. Or select range, that is also a full node. Things, things like that, right? Okay. So yeah, there are a lot of things Different you can do. You can get your yeah, mm -hmm. interesting, cool. Yeah, uh, really. Thank you very much. I think that's. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. There's one more question. Uh, have you ever tried experimenting with uh something like speed tree? Yes. Oh. In fact, I, 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 it was uh, like a. <laughs> Really funny story because I started doing foliage as oh, my first foliage. I was started, like I mentioned before, like months ago, and I decided to learn speed tree. So I I use it almost every day. So I try some things there, here and there, roots, something like that. Trees. It's funny because speed tree. I use speed tree to create ground foliage instead of create trees. So I have I have made trees, but not as many as foliage. Mm -hmm. But but. Uh, I did an artist some months ago also, and I feel confident about speed tree. And one of the limitations, I can say it, one of the limitations was not using speed tree. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I have some couple of days, and how, how on earth do I change my whole workflow and end up with the same quality mm -hmm. result, high quality result? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I mean, I was like nervous about it, but I did it pretty, pretty well. So I ended up with similar, similar quality. Yeah. I, I decided to just take a look at grown foliage here and not too much about speed three because yeah. it might sound intimidating, but at the end of the day, it's just like, no, like changing parameters mm -hmm. that is, is better for you to explore it. Like I can talk an hour here about speed three, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but, no, I, yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. It's just different tools for different, you know, it's like. Yeah. Thought for something, I guess. It's just whichever kind of yeah. works for the given situation that you're in uh, and what you're comfortable yeah, it, with as well. It's, it's really good. You, you, get, you get more used to it if you use it re a lot of time. So mm -hmm. you, you understand you. You'll understand me. Cool. Believe me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was in the same the same spot. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Joseph. Joseph's socials are in the uh, workshop chat. Thank you, Joe, for posting them. So if you're not following him on Twitter, ArtStation, uh, you can you can drop him a follow. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time, dude, to speak to us this evening. That was really informative, very, very useful. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone has a good rest of their evening. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the opportunity. No problem.